Hello friends, welcome back. Struggling with complex state management in Angular? Let me show you how Angular Signal makes it effortless to keep your UI in sync with your data. So stay tuned for an easy to understand guide and a real world example with Angular 19 and Signals. So without delay, come let's get started. Angular Signals have become very important in terms of the managing the state in the Angular. So let's deep dive into the angular signals with real-time example. What are angular signals? Angular signals are a new way to manage state inside the angular application. Think of signals as special variables that can automatically update other parts of your app when their value changes. Now this makes it easier to keep your app's UI in sync with the data. How do angular signal works? Signals can hold a value like a number or a string. So when this value changes, any part of your app that uses this signal will automatically update. Let's take a simple analogy. Imagine a signal is like a light switch. Okay, when you flip the switch, like update the value, all the rooms, which is like a part of apps that needs the light, which is a value here, will automatically turn on, which is an update that's happening. How are signals different from the traditional ways? If you're not using signals, the, the traditional uh, Angular apps where developers uses the observables or the event emitters to manage the state and communicate the changes. Now these tools can be complex and require manual subscription and unsubscription. So signals makes this process simpler by automatically keeping track of the changes. Why you use Angular? It has three important benefits, simplicity, performance, and the state management. Its simplicity is signals automatically update your app whenever the value changes, so you don't need to worry about the subscription. In terms of performance, signals are optimized to update only the part of the app that needs to be changed, making your app much faster. And in terms of the state management, signals let you manage and update the state directly in your components without worrying about other Angular tools. Now we're going to take a look at the real-time example in terms of Angular 19 coding. So before we go in, we were also building the uh, we were also building the full stack development video series for 2025, and Angular will be and Angular signals will be heavily used in that application. So this will be the fundamentals that you should know as we will be using more in the full stack development Angular 19 application, which is the Smart Certify app, an online certification platform, right? So stay tuned. And now let's dive into the coding. Now go to this github.com slash learn smart coding, who already know about this. They know all of these repositories are here. And the one which we are working will be under Angular 19 features example. So go here and download the code and this will have every single concept that I was talking about as well as the coding example. Now I have downloaded the code and I'm going to show you some basic stuff here. All right. So the one that you're seeing here is a contact us form. The contact us form here, which so we have taken a contact as form. If you look at this website, which was uh, one of the full stack development video series. Now we will focus on only the angular signals. So this is the contact app form, right? So where you enter your name, email, subject, message, and then if everything looks good, you send a message and it goes and calls an API and triggers the call, right? Now this is purely written in reactive form. This is what I have taken as an example of this repository. So the code that you see here is exactly what I showed you in the demo, right? Now here, if you, let's take a look at the code here, what it is does. So it basically has a reactive form. This is Angular 19. So we are using standalone. That's the default in Angular 19. And uh, it's a standalone component. So we are using Angular 19 and standalone component. So standalone is by default uh, set as true by the Angular team from Angular 19. All right. So here, what do we have? We have a reactive form. We have a contact form that uses the form group. We initialize the form group and then a simple submit button where it just calls an API, right? So how do we, uh, you know, implement the Angular signals here? Much easy. Let's take a look at one by one. Okay, so the first thing is we need to create a signal. So in order to create a signal, let me create a variable called form validity and that you are assigning something called signal. See the moment you say signal, it gets imported here. You can see the signal is coming from Angular core 
and uh, you can actually set the value so in order to set the value like initial value you can the, the signal can accept a number or a string so in this case we any type right in this case we are saying it's a false it's a boolean type okay so we have defined one signal now what we do is the idea of this so now what we do we do this so we are going to do this all right so the next thing is what we are going to do is in the constructor which is here right so we are going to subscribe to the status of the form okay you see this the copilot is already telling me what to do here which is nice right so if you have not seen how the github copilot can help you with the coding stay tuned if you like to more about uh, setting up the copilot for free in your visual studio code i already have a video in it and it will give you in the description and please take a look and I'm going to just tap it. Let's see what happens. So basically, it says the contact form dot status change. So we are subscribing to any of the status change, like any changes to this form. And then when the value comes, all what we are doing is we are doing this form validity dot set. We are setting true or false based on this value. So when you subscribe to this, the status will tell you the form is valid or not. So all what you're doing is if the state is valid, we set true. If the state is not valid, we set false. So we still set true or false, but this is how you write a value to the signal. Okay, so we assigned, uh, created a signal and we are now setting a value to the signal. Now, how do we use this? So let's go to this HTML and what do we have today? We are disabling the button, the send message button we are disabling based on the form is invalid or not. So now we will update this to take the value from the signal. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to change this to not form validity. So form validity is a signal. If you want to use a signal, you need to call that as a function. Remember that, okay, it's not a variable. It's actually a signal, so you need to call as a function. This will, you know, retrieve the value of the form validity uh, variable, which is nothing but a signal. So we are saying, hey, disable it if it is not valid. That's what we are saying. Not valid, disable it. It will set true here. Okay. Now let's take a look how it looks. Okay. So I opened up the project. Let's click on contact us. You see this? So this, this is disabled, right? This is disabled only because of what we wrote. See, if I fill it, this gets enabled. But the moment I remove it, this gets disabled. So signals can actually update this DOM based on the value that we change. And this is also a signal. I'm going to teach you how it is going to work. Now, let's do uh, you know few more things. So I'm going to add two types of signals. OK, so we already have one signal. Let's enhance this. So we have two signals called error message that accepts a string. So it's a string type. OK, and then we have something called field errors. We're going to check the fields errors one by one. And if you look at this, it has a signal of type record, which is like a unique uh, based on the key. It is of like it's a key value pair. OK, so in dictionary or key value pair, you see that, right? So it's a key and a value. So we are going to initialize with the empty one. That's why this is empty. OK, so we initialize these things. So now we're going to make use of these things. So I'm going to bring a method. OK, what this method is going to do is this method is going to go over every single control inside the form. And for each one, OK, what we are going to do for each one, it is seeing whether the control is touched or dirty. Touched means the moment you enter the control and leave it like a mouse enter and out, it's called touch. And dirty means you typed and then you just deleted what you typed. OK, so that's called dirty. So if any of these things are there and then if the control is having a required symbol, which is here, every in our case, everything is required. We are just going to add um, the fields OK, as a error message. So we have this method. OK, and then what it is doing after it goes through everything, it is finally setting the value to this field error signals, this one. OK, so for good, we are setting it. We are updating the signal value. Now what we do, we are going to do one more thing. So we will subscribe to one of the event in the constructor. So after this, I'm going to write a piece of code. What it is doing, it is basically for every single control, for each of every single control. OK, we are subscribing to the control change. 
and whenever we are subscribing we are saying call this method which is nothing but this method okay okay so so for good now one last part that we need to do is we come to this uh, on submit and then let's say we are calling the api and when it returns we reset any messages and we reset the field errors and everything because we are resetting the form so we set this so this is how you uh, you know set an uh, default value okay so this is how you clear the signals also and then if in case we have any errors all what we do is we will actually go and update the error message signal okay there is something called error message signal and then we update the error message signal with based on the error like if it is 404 if it is 400 if it's an error like 500 we update some different values okay and then in the else statement we just call this method okay if nothing is good we just call this method so what will happen if i do all of these things um you know we have all of these variables having the right signal values so let's update the form here all right so all i'm doing is i'm updating this div with uh, this form with two divs the first one is to show the error message the second one is to go through every single uh, you know the field value error and then it will update the error here so there is um, a new variable defined here if you look at this object value is a variable and it's nothing but object dot values okay so we are going to read that in um, whatever we have it here like this one and we're gonna display the error so let's see how it looks okay so basically because we have added here you look at this as soon as i type this is wrong right so the code got evaluated the signal started updating this the moment i type something it went off see if i start removing everything it is coming with all of these values so these fields values are because of the signals that we made right so we were able to see how the signals needs to be evaluated how so we saw how the signals can be created how the signals can be updated and uh, you know how you can reset the signals and how you can use the signals so now let's take a look at the other types of concepts in the signal all right so we know how we can create a signal like this like we use a signal and then set a value and we know how to read the signal because it's going to be like a function but basically we are reading the signal and for updating the signal we just need to use the set and set the value okay now here comes some more important concepts the first concept is called computed signal so computer signal means basically a computer signals are signal those um, so computer signal means computer signals are signal whose values are derived from other signals okay so these six, these are similar to the derived state or computer properties in other frameworks so they allow you to create values that depends on the other signal so what does it mean basically so if we have a signal okay we have another signal but this signal is called computer signal how when you assign we say computed and then the function goes and basically this is the logic that is uh, written inside the computer this is a function basically this is a function okay so we're saying hey take the value of this signal multiply by two and then whatever answer comes that is what assigned to this signal okay so basically this signal depends on this signal and that's why this is just a read only and it evaluates as soon as the signal value changes okay nice right this triggers this one and this one will evaluate and this one is uh, changed whoever is using this also gets triggered automatically so all of this change detection happens very nicely there's another important concept called effect okay so effect is basically it's to allow you to run side effects when signals are changing it's like a logging or a debugging mechanism that you can know uh, you can you will come to know what's happening uh, when the signals are changing for example so let's say we have a signal called counter and then we just have a method called effort and inside that you can write some logs okay counter updated to this value whenever this is changing this gets triggered whenever is happening something to the signal this gets triggered this nice right so even when you set this this gets triggered basically because this got updated that's the concept so you can use the signals in the error handling like this so for error handling basically you assign a signal and then you're computing it to another signal while you're computing you can use the signal to see if it is valid because initially it is a null it's it's not valid so if you return some default message if there is some value you use 
that uh, value okay so that's how you can handle the errors also and you can multiple uh, signals can be managed like basically more than one signals you can update you can compute so for example you see this this one is a nice uh, computer signal so this computer signal is actually calling these two signal and multiplying so this signal depends on these two signal even any one of these things changes this runs this updates whenever this updates whoever is looking for this will automatically get updated in the UI. Nice, right? So you can combine this effect and computer signals like this together. Like you have a default signal, you have a computer signal, and you have an effort. So whenever you set something, this changes, this changes, this automatically changes, and this also runs because this changes. Because sum is what is called. So nice, right? All of these things are, are very nice. You can you already saw in the demo how to reset or clearing a signal. You just need to set its default value by using the set, and that's it. Everything will work. All right. So there are uh, plenty of things that you can do with the signals. This uh, let it be. Let this signal concept be some basics that we will uh, first understand. And as we build big big applications like how we are building the smart certify app. You'll be seeing a lot of signals getting used because as you work in IT, you know, uh, these days company expect uh, all the application to have a top notch performance. So in order to get to the good performance, wherever is possible for the state management, it's better to use a signal. So stay tuned and um, signals are very simple way to manage the state in the Angular application. So these are the takeaways for this video, so, right? Signals are a simple way to manage the state and the angular application they automatically update your ui whenever the state changes signal reduces the need for subscription and manual state management signals can be used for both simple and complex state management in the angular so just to conclude angular signals offer a new simpler and more efficient way to manage the state and keep your application in sync whether you are managing simple counters or complex data, signals can help make your code more maintainable and performant. Want to take your Angular skills to the next level? Hit the subscribe button and turn on notifications so you don't miss any future tutorials. Also, leave a comment below with your thoughts on Angular signals or any questions you might have. I would love to hear how you are planning to use this in your project. Stay tuned and I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you found this video helpful, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel for more tech tutorials. And don't forget to hit the bell icon to get notified when we post new videos. If you have any questions or suggestions, leave them in the comments below. Happy coding!